Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord is good. And all the time. I want to take this moment, first of all, to, to thank the Lord for the opportunity to stand before his holy presence this morning. And I want to welcome all of us to our sharing of the word of God this morning. Those of us who are following online within the countries and outside the borders of this country, we want to welcome you. And as we turn our attention to God's word, may the Lord speak to our hearts. Today, as it is mentioned, it is the Pastor's Appreciation Day. And I was just wondering why the pastor invited me to speak during the pastor's appreciation day. But I said, the Lord has humbled me not to ask many questions. I will only do my task and ask the Lord to give me grace as we share the word of God. And just before we appreciate our pastors, my wife and I, all the time we remember you, your kindness, your love. We will always, <clears throat> we always continue to say thank you. Thank you to the ladies of this church. Thank you for the men of this church. And may the Lord continue to bless you as you minister to the Lord and also to our pastors. And pastors, thank you so much. Today, I want us to look at what is before us that is already projected. I trust the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us as we look unto the word of God. I thank God for everything. Our text this morning has been read to us, but I want to read four verses that will be a center of, of our attention this morning. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, and uh, verses 6 to 7. The Bible says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him, a woman having a alabaster box of a very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at the meal. And verses 8 says, But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment may it have been sold for much and given to the poor. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Our title, as it's already indicated, a break, break your alabaster. Flask. Let's pray together. Father God in heaven, it has pleased you today that your word that you have selected from the book of Matthew be read to all of us. That we may draw lessons that will help us in our Christian journey to be prepared to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. And just before we share these words, I pray, Almighty God, and I beseech you, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. May your angelic host surround us in this place. And may we see Jesus Christ through the action of Mary. 
And may this appreciation Sabbath for the past be meaningful to each one of us. That we shall be always be grateful to you. And Lord, now as I stand, may I just be a vessel that you will use for the glorification of your son. And before we do that, forgive my trespasses. Forgive the trespasses of men and women who are seated and who are following online in your very holy presence. Please speak to us again because we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The story that I've just read from the scripture selected from the book of Matthew is about a woman who came to Jesus with an alabaster flask of a very expensive ointment. She had a mission. Her mission was to anoint Jesus before his death. She was not a host. She was not attendant. She was not invited to the party. Her service was not needed either. But she invited herself. Her services was an expression of gratitude. Her gratitude was to our Lord Jesus Christ. It was the gratitude for the forgiveness that Jesus Christ graciously granted unto her. The gratitude of the forgiveness of her many sins. When one day she was paraded, accompanied by men, and they said to Jesus, we have caught this woman red-handed. Master, the law of Moses is explicit. What says thou? And they had carried stones in readiness to destroy this woman. And Jesus looked unto the people who had brought Mary to Jesus. And he read their hearts. And their hearts before the Lord was like an open page. And every sin each one of them had committed passed before the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus bent down and began to write every sin committed by the men that had accused this woman, that they had purposed to destroy this woman. He wrote the name and the sin of every person, and every person that beheld his sin recorded down, placed the stone down and left unceremoniously. One by one, until all of them had disappeared. And Mary was waiting the first missile of a stone to land on her head. And as she was waiting, she could hear the commotion. She could hear the movement of the people leaving one by one. And she didn't know what was happening. Her head was bowed down. For she knew this is the end of her life. When she lifted her head up, there was no one except the stones, the piles of stones. And Jesus was there. And Jesus said, Neither me, I accuse you, but go, but sin no more. Mary expressed her gratitude to Jesus Christ and her gratitude that brought relief to her mind because Jesus saved her. And this event was taking place in the home of Simon the leper. Simon of Bethany. And this man, 
is the uncle of Mary. And this man, he is the man that led Mary into sin. He was a Pharisee. He had been healed of leprosy. He had openly joined Christ followers. But he did not fully accept Jesus Christ as his personal savior. He invited Jesus to his home to express his gratitude to what the Lord had done to him. The healing that Jesus had bestowed unto him. He wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. I was a reject. You accepted me. I was a cast away. Not to mingle with men as by the rules, the, the rules, the moral rules this, of Israel. You laid your hand on me. You touched me. You restored my health. You healed me. He came to Jesus. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. When you read the book of Matthew, chronologically, the events, the event in the house of Simeon, is basically out of order of the occurrence. This event took place six days before the Passover feast. Matthew deliberately placed an account of anointing be between the plot of the Jewish leaders and Judah's offer to betray Jesus. Mary's heart was filled with gratitude for her pardon sins, for her spared life, for Jesus calling his brother from the grave to life. Mary was grateful for the grace that he received from Jesus Christ. And she wanted to demonstrate her love for her Lord. For what Jesus Christ is. And for what is he has done in his life. And the ointment from her savings was worth over a year's wage. In the Roman era, the day's wage is equivalent to one denarius. And one denarius is equivalent to US dollar, $32. The ointment was worth 30 denarius that Mary had to purchase and anoint her savior. Mary had a heart, had a wind that Jesus is heading to the home of Simeon. Mary had a heart from Jesus Christ of his approaching death. She had longed to show him honor at a great personal sacrifice she had to purchase an alabaster box of ointment that she may pour and anoint Jesus Christ and poured upon the head of Jesus Christ and poured on his feet anointing Jesus Christ before his death. When she came into the room and she broke alabaster flask the ointment filled the room with the fragrance and published her act to all that were present. And everybody knew something is happening. 
Something is happening. And those who are seated at a distance, they wondered what is happening. And they could recognize something is happening because they saw Mary bending before the Lord. Judas and the disciples, they looked up at his act with great displeasure. Judas said, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pennies and given to the poor? To what purpose is the West? Judas. She saw the act of Mary as West. Judas perceived the service for the master is a West. The service of the master as a West. Any sacrifice for the master is a West. Any gift for the master is the worst. Judas complaining, criticizing the action of Mary. The Bible tells us Judas cared not for the poor. Judas gave nothing to the poor. Judas sacrificed nothing to the poor. Judas visited not the poor. Judas thought nothing about the poor except himself. For he stole from the kitty that he carried. Friends, today, today in our society, many people bring their precious gift to the dead. Many speak the words of love to them who hear not. Many conduct devotion to them who see neither, hear not. Many give flowers to them who see them not. Many sing to them who hear not the songs they are singing. And many build houses for them that have fallen asleep who feel it not. Many buy clothes for them who have fallen asleep who feel it not. Mary, she recognized, I have to do something for my Savior. I have to express my gratitude to my Savior. I have to do something for my Lord. Friends, had these words been spoken to them when the weary spirit needed them so much? Had this kindness been directed to them when they could see and feel it? Had these kind words be spoken when the ears could hear and hear and their hearts could feel it? How precious would have been their action. And the Bible and Sister White makes a statement these are of ages. Page 560, paragraph 4. Mary knew not the full significance of her, her deeds of love. She could not answer her accus accusers. She could not explain why she had chosen that occasion for anointing Jesus. The Holy Spirit had planned for her and she had obeyed his prompting, inspiring stoops to give a reason. An unseen presence it speaks mind and soul and moves the hearts to action. It is his own justification. Mary, love is the fragrant gift to the body of Christ in the living form. Mary offered the gift to Jesus in his lifetime. Mary poured her fragrance to Jesus when he could see it. The sweetest or the sweetness pervaded the whole room. The fragrant gladdened the heart of Jesus Christ. Friends, when Mary was doing this, Nicodemus offered his gift of love to Jesus in his cold and unconscious form. Joseph of Aramadea 
offered his gift to Jesus in his cold and unconscious form. The women who went to the tomb early in the morning, they brought their costly spices for his cold and unconscious form, but found their errand in vain. Mary poured her love while he was of her devotion. Gave her service to Jesus Christ when he could see, when he could hear, when he could feel it. Mary offered a service to the Lord. Mary knew the time. Mary knew to read the signs of the time. Mary came on time. Mary brought her gift to Jesus on time. Mary anointed Jesus Christ for his death on time. Mary anointed Jesus for his burial. Jesus went down into darkness of trial with the memory of her deeds of love. Jesus went to the cross with the memory of her act of kindness. For Mary knew the time. Jesus told Mary the meaning of her act. She did it for his burial. She did it for his burial. Alabaster oil was to be broken. And she broke it. The fragrance filled the whole house. Christ was to die. His body was to be broken. He was to rise from the tomb. The fragrance was his life. The fragrance of his life was to fill the whole universe. What the world is waiting today, it is the fragrance of Jesus Christ. What the world is waiting to fill today is the fragrance of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus Christ. The goodness of Jesus Christ. The kindness of Jesus Christ. The mercy of Jesus Christ. The world wants to know Jesus. They want to feel Jesus. They want to see Jesus. They want to touch Jesus. The fragrance of his life has to fill the universe. When it has filled the universe, Jesus made a statement, when the Son of Man is lifted up, I will draw all men unto, unto myself. Paul writes to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 2, and the Bible says, and walk in love, as Christ also loved us, and had given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. The life of Jesus Christ that the world is longing for. The love of Jesus Christ the world is desiring for. The goodness of Jesus Christ the world is desiring for. The forgiveness of Jesus Christ, the world is desiring for. The kindness of Jesus Christ, the world is desiring for. Friends, as, we, as I stand before you today, in this special moment of the Pastor's Appreciation Day, we can see what the pastor does. We can see what the pastor sacrifices. We can see the dedication of the pastor. Every day as they struggle to meet our spiritual needs. You came to me at my lowest moment. You came to me when I was emotionally broken. You came to me when I was giving up in life. You came to me when I was grieving. You came to me when I, had no, when I had been abandoned. You came to me when I was at the crossroad. You came to me when I was in my sick bed and praying for me. You taught me 
the word of God. Today, I want to say thank you. You prayed for me. You prayed for my wayward children. You prayed for my healing. You prayed for my joblessness for a job. You prayed for my singleness for a spouse. You prayed for my childlessness for a child. You prayed for my spiritual bankruptcy to spirit feel life. Today, we say thank you. You came to see me in the prison. You came to see me in the hospital. You visited me with me at home. You visited with me in school. You visited with me at my working place. You visited with me in my rural home. Today, I want to say thank you. The, the book of Matthew chapter 25 and verses 40, the Bible says, in as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. You have done it unto me. I know your sacrifice as a pastor. I know your dedication as a pastor. And I know you are able to come out of your cocoons and make sure that the needs of a member is met. Sometimes you go out to midnight. Sometimes up to the morning. Sometimes you have no rest. Sometimes you are hungry. But there is a God in heaven who watches over your services to God. And that's the reason why the Bible says, in as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Jesus says, you have done it unto me. Mary, she broke alabaster flask that the fragrance may come out. It is time for us to break our individual alabaster flasks so that the life of Jesus Christ can be seen. The life of Jesus Christ can be felt. The life of Jesus Christ can be smelled. That when people will see the kindness of Jesus Christ, when they see the goodness of Jesus Christ, when they see the mercy of Jesus Christ, when they see the mercy of Jesus Christ, when they see the grace of Jesus Christ, they will say, I want to be Christian. We have to break our alabaster flask to allow the life of Jesus Christ to fill our individual lives, to fill our Christian experience to fill our Christian journey, that we can be driven by the life of Jesus Christ that bring it a change, that change it from within to without. Friends, we need the law. We need the law. We need the Lord in this generation as the world is filled with darkness, as the world is encountering unbearable challenges. As the world is in war, as the world is starving, as the world is filled with the corruption and, and name them, we need the law. We need to break our flask that the life of Jesus Christ of integrity has to be felt. We need to break our flask that Jesus Christ and the sweet smelling of Jesus Christ, people can feel it. People can make a decision of it. Because Jesus Christ's life, it is what brings a transformation. It is the life of Jesus Christ. The world needs Jesus Christ. The world needs a ministry that is a spirit-filled. The world needs a ministry that is a spirit-filled that can bring a revolution and a change, that heaven shall be glorified, heaven shall be honored. And Jesus said, whatever this woman has done, as the gospel is preached into the whole world, our action shall accompany the preaching of the gospel. Meaning what? The action of Mary 
Jesus says, it shall be written, it shall be read, it shall be said on the hills, it shall be said on the valley. The action of Mary, of anointing Jesus before his burial, by breaking the flask, alabaster flask, that Jesus Christ, people may see him, people may see his life, People may discern his goodness. People may discern his grace, his, his sweet smelling fragrance of Jesus Christ. It is what every believer has to demonstrate by our action, by our action and our speech to tell the world Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ has come to say. When I was a pastor, of satellite. A lady called me. Said, Pastor, please, I need you to come to my house. I went to meet my elders. When we reached in our home in Karen, and she said, the Lord healed me. The Lord restored my health. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was gone, but he brought me back. He has done a favor to me. And she said, and because of the goodness of God, because of the mercy of God, I have decided to give a half an acre to the Lord in Karen. And she told me, even when I decided to do this, a sister of mine came and said, what are you doing? What a waste. And she said, when I give to the Lord, it's a waste. When we consume, it's okay. And she said, get out of my house. For I know where the Lord picked me from. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was forgotten, but now I'm alive. And because of the goodness of God, I have decided to share my property with God. Friends, if you reflect, what has the Lord been to you? What has the Lord done in your life? As I stand before you, I shared my testimony before. I was a dead man. I was in coma for 10 hours. Everybody had written me out. It's gone. And those who cried, they cried. It's gone. And those who knew how to weep, they wept. And they said, it's gone. 10 hours. The question today, what can I give to God? What can I give to God as I join Mary? Mary, she spent all her salary for the whole year. And she bought the alabaster oil flask. And she came and anointed Jesus Christ. What can we give to God? Today, in the pastor's appreciation, we have come to say thank you. As I ask the three pastors to come, we just want to say thank you for your service. As I ask the two daughters, the two daughters or three daughters to come and sing a song, we just want to say thank you to God. As we say thank you to the, to the members, we want to say thank you to the pastors. And pray for them and ask the Lord to give them strength. Ask the Lord to give them the grace. To ask the Lord to strengthen them as they continue to minister to God. It is our duty. Like one leper. Out of ten lepers. Out of ten lepers. Jesus healed. And only one. And he was a Gentile, a Samaritan who went to Jesus and said, thank you, Master. Thank you. I was a leper, but you have healed me. I was isolated, but you have embraced me. We were sick, and we had gotten a dead certificate, but Lord, you reversed it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Today, as we thank the, the clergy who are here, we want to thank God for your service. We may not have anything to give to you, 
But we want to say thank you. You have burned midnight oil, but we want to say thank you. You have made sacrifices, but we want to say thank you. You have brought blessings into our marriages, we want to say thank you. You have visited us in the hospital and prayed for us and laid your hands unto us today and we, heal, we got healing. Today we want to say thank you. God bless you. 